normally when people go on evangelism all that they preach about is jesus now we've been made to understand in uh, luke 4 43 that jesus christ was sent to preach the kingdom so is it is it good that we go ahead and then be preaching jesus christ or do we preach the kingdom thank you very much that is a very brilliant question and a very wonderful question but if you remember very well i made a statement that is a difficult statement to make but i can defend that statement everywhere on planet earth what was that statement i made a statement that the whole thing about christianity is a religion and it's a big mess it's a big massive mess all over the world somebody will say how old are you and you are talking like that it has nothing to do with how old i am the old age of Methuselah has nothing to do with the wisdom of King Solomon. Methuselah lived 900 and over years, and all he could do is to begat and die. He wasted God's resources, God's energy, God's life. So age has nothing to do with wisdom. Wisdom is precepts descended from God. Now I'm talking about we go and preach Jesus. Can you believe and can you be shocked that even Jesus himself never preached himself? Can you imagine this? He never preached himself. He never. Every time he opened his mouth, he said, And my father, and my father said this, and my father sent me to do this, and my father told me this, I love my, my father loves me. You see, he never said anything about himself. That is surprising. How can the man come? He didn't talk about himself and we are busy talking about himself what did the man say actually let's go back to the bible let's go to acts chapter one the man himself made his own statement about what you are talking about evangelism look at what he said acts chapter one Acts chapter 1 verse 8 look at what he said he said but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in all Judea in Samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth he didn't say evangelize he said you shall become witnesses of me now let's analyze the word witness what is the meaning of the word witness? Now, to your information, the word witness comes from the legal court grounds. Witness is a court term. It's a legal term. Okay? It is not an ordinary term. Okay? That means if we want to understand the meaning of the word witness, we must go to the courtroom and ask the professional lawyers and judges. They own that word. And when we go to them, they will tell you that a witness is somebody who comes to testify of a fact, of a truth. If I said something and you were there and then I have a case in court and the judge say, where is your evidence? I say, okay, I have evidence. I go and call the person who was there and you were the person and I call you. When you come to the court, you are not going to come and be telling stories. You are coming to witness what I have told the court with the court wants an evidence and you came to give that evidence so a witness is a person who gives evidence of what the fact is all about so what Jesus wanted us to do was to go and witness to the world give them evidence that he came and presented the kingdom of God now before Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Look at what he said. Verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen by 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. The man was speaking things pertaining the kingdom of God. Now, even in Acts chapter 3, look, it is about when he resurrected the man came out of the grave 
and the Bible said he gave the infallible proofs. Okay, infallible proofs in 40 days about he is alive. He is the man who was crucified. Three days he resurrected from the grave. And this evidence of his resurrection was with the Roman government because the Roman government duted plenty of soldiers to guide the tomb. And the soldiers guided the tomb. And the soldiers were officials of a government. They cannot lie. They were not trained to lie. They were trained to speak truth. Now look at their report. Let's go to Matthew 28. What the soldiers who were guiding the tomb saw and they gave the report. It, it, it's very serious. Before I come to talk about this issue about witness, it's very important we talk about it. Look at what their report was in Matthew 28. And the report of the God. You see? Uh, Matthew 28, 11. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came unto the city. And showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave the large money unto the soldiers. Why? The soldiers saw what happened. Now, what did the soldiers see? Let's read what they saw. Uh -huh. Look at Matthew 28 verse 4. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And as he said, Come see the place where the Lord laid, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There he shall see him low, I have told you. You see, the soldiers saw everything life. What did they see? Look at verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white and like snow. The soldiers that were on duty guiding the tomb saw everything. They felt the earthquake. The Bible said they became like dead men. And these soldiers went and gave the report to the Pharisees who were the enemies of Jesus. These were religious leaders. And what did the religious leaders do? The Bible said they gave them huge large of sum of money. Saying, look at the verse 13. Matthew 28 verse 13. Saying, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. How can the soldiers go and give such a report? That, oh, the disciples came and stole his body while we were asleep. Are you on duty to sleep? The soldiers cannot say that. Because it will be their dead life. They will be punished to death to come and open their mouth and say, whilst we were sleeping. Were they supposed to sleep? Look at verse 14. And if this come to the govern governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. You see, the Pharisees planted the lies that you go and say this, that the disciple came and stole the body while we were sleeping. And if the government, the governor hears it, we the Pharisees, the religious leaders, will go and convince the governor so that you won't be in trouble. See, this is the secret that were hidden by the Roman government. Let's go back to our Acts. And then we talk about that. In the Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we saw it. That you shall be witnesses of me. So if you want to talk about what Jesus brought, which is the kingdom, you are supposed to go and talk about it as a witness. That you witness him preaching nothing but the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom means nation and a government. That is what you should go and witness. So even the word evangelism, I did a private search. In fact, I found nothing like that. I found nothing like evangelism in the Hebrew and in the Greek. So where did the word come from? It was a coined word by translators. But it doesn't make sense. I would prefer we be witnesses of Jesus being a person who brought kingdom. 
Jesus never preached himself. He preached kingdom. He said the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is this. The Jesus never preached himself. Even the resurrection we are preaching. Verse 3 of Acts chapter 1. The man died and resurrected. Spent 40 days with the disciples. But he never said anything about his death about his punishment, about his crucifixion, about his blood, about his resurrection. He never said anything about it. Verse 3 of Acts chapter 1. 40 days he spent with the people. He was speaking things pertaining the kingdom of God. Ah! Why? The man never preached his resurrection. He never preached his blood. He never preached his death. He never preached his uh, 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 punishment, his suffering. He preached nothing but the kingdom of God. So we are supposed to be witnesses of the kingdom of God. So when you go out to witness, all you need to witness is to witness about the kingdom of God. But here you are, you don't know what the kingdom of God is. A man of God that interviewed me on an international television station. After the interview, he said, yes, prophet, you know, we are busy doing the kingdom of God. I said, what do you know, what, do you, what, what, what are you talking about? He said, oh, you know, we are in ministry, we are running ministry, we are fellowshipping, you know, gathering people, making crusades. I said, that is not the kingdom of God. He said, what do I mean, prophet? I said, what is the kingdom of God? He said, oh, is it not congregating and fellowship? I said, wrong. The word kingdom means a nation and a government. I said, check it in your dictionary. He was shocked. When he checked, it was true. He said, what? Then, prophet, we don't know what we are doing. I said, the whole thing about Christianity is a big, massive mess worldwide. So this is mysteries we are speaking about. I said, when it is kingdom, it is about government and a nation. Jesus brought nothing but a government and a nation. That is why before he came, God didn't want this big mess confusion. So God sent prophet Isaiah 2,000 and over years preparing the ground before he would come. And what did Isaiah say? Look at what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 9. Hmm? Isaiah chapter 9. Look at what Isaiah said. Okay? Isaiah was to prepare before his coming. Isaiah chapter 9. And look at what the prophet Isaiah said. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to verse 7. He said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see, two things mentioned here that are important. Government and kingdom. Kingdom here represents nation. When you check the word kingdom, it says nation. And the government is there. Already mentioned by the prophet Isaiah. That means Jesus carried on his shoulders government and brought to us on earth. Which is the kingdom. So if you go witnessing... You must witness about the government, about the nation. But here you are as a Christian. You never learned it because your pastor didn't know it. Your bishop didn't know it. Your reverend didn't know it. Whoever they are, apostles, prophets, teachers, all, they didn't know it. Because they never studied it. Only a few people whisper it. But they don't even know much. But this is the privilege we have also gone to research and let. And we are bringing it out. It is time for us to gather ourselves to learn it. We will be making seminars. And we will even start Academy of Kingdom Philosophy. Which is going to be teaching purely kingdom. Which the world has not taught. So that we will start to do the writing. Not evangelizing, but witnessing. But that is what Jesus asked them to do in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That ye shall be witnesses of me. And me here means he. And he means what? He brought kingdom. He brought a government. And that is why the evidence was clear that when he was arrested from the Garden of Gethsemane in the night, even though the arrest was illegal, he was taken to the Pharisees and the scribes. They were religious body. They made their religious court. And when they took him there, the Bible said he uttered no word. Why? He was 
sent to the wrong court. Because you don't send a politician to a religious court. Jesus was a politician. Okay? Jesus was a politician. So when they couldn't try him at the religious court, they decided, okay, let's send him to Pilate. And surprisingly, surprisingly when he landed at Pilate's place, Pilate asked him, do you know the accusation they accuse you? They accuse you that you say you are a king. He said, yes, for this cause was I born. I don't deny it. For this cause was I sent. Okay? So it means that this man, Jesus, came as a political figure. That's why he was a king. Pilate was representing another king called Caesar. And he was the governor. Pilate means the word governor. So Jesus too has come as a king to establish his kingdom and his government. That is why he respected tax. Because he knew that as a government himself, he needs tax. So when they asked him about his tax and his disciples, he said, wait. Go to the fish. Go and pick a fish and open the fish. You bring a coin. Pay for all of us. He respected tax. He said, pay to Caesar his tax and pay to me and my father our own tax too. So the man brought politics. That is why the word church is from a political source. The word church came from the Greek word ecclesia. And the Greek word ecclesia is the same word senate. That is what Americans use as senators. And they are political men, political women, political body. So in fact, the whole thing about Christianity is a big massive mess. We don't even know what we are talking about. We are the most confused people on earth. Sorry to say that, but it's true. I used to be part of the confusion. God has delivered me, and I'm waiting to deliver you. So come, my brother, come, my sister, so that you can be delivered. So you do not go preaching what you are preaching, because what you are preaching is wrong. Jesus never preached himself. Okay? He never preached himself. He never preached resurrection. He never preached his blood. He never preached his death. He never preached the miracles. He never preached born again. What did he preach? That's the big question to ask. What did he preach? He preached the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. In the four gospels of Jesus' statements, it is nothing but the kingdom of God. My brother, I advise you to follow the four gospels because that is the old horse mat. They say the whole the mat old west. And in Luke 4 43, he said, I must preach the gospel of the kingdom in other cities also. For this cause. In NIV, he says, for this reason was I sent. Ah, why? The Lord richly bless you. Okay, Prof. Um, now, Paul said that I preach Christ and him crucified. So, um, why shouldn't we be preaching Christ? Fine. That was what Paul said. Paul. Who is Paul? Paul is giving his report. And people are mistaking something. Paul was talking about this when there was confusion in the churches. What was the confusion? Peter and Co. were bringing confusion because of the Jewish traditions. Okay? Talking about the Jewish are holy, they don't mingle with the Gentiles, this confusion. And Paul was trying to say that, yes, you Jewish are this, because you are Abraham descendant. But Jesus also crucified, died, brought in the Gentiles as part of us. That is what Paul was talking about. What is the main preaching of Paul at the end of the day? Let's go to Acts again. You know, we did by facts. Hmm? Look at what Paul did. Before he died, the, the right thing Paul must do, he knows himself. Paul must do the right thing. He knows. Acts chapter 28. Look at what Paul did. Acts chapter 28, verse 30. Look at what he said. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hide house. This is when he was in Rome. Remember, Romans conquered the whole world. So Rome was the city, capital city of the whole world. Paul was in a hide house. The government of Rome rented that house and put him there because they couldn't kill him, they couldn't jail him, they don't know what to do with him. So they all have to do is to put him in a nice house and let him rest. And that was when Paul got time to write all the books. Now look at what he says, verse 30 of Acts chapter 28. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hide house and received all that came unto him, verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence no man forbid him. Preaching what? The kingdom of God. Paul knows that that is what has to be preached. 
But when he was preaching Christ crucified, it was the confusion about Gentiles and then uh, the Jews. If you remember Peter, he went dodging so that the Jews don't see him when he ministered to Cornelius' house. He didn't want to associate himself with them. Traditions. Okay? And Jesus came breaking those traditions. It was those traditions that misled the Pharisees. The traditions was what misled the Pharisees. And that is what misled the today's church. Because the today's church is running from what they learned from the Pharisees and the scribes and the synagogue owners of old. The Romans learned from there. Because the Roman Empire knew them. So they learned from there to start the first Roman church. Which birthed out all these churches we have in this world. The Roman Catholic, birthed out Presby, Baptist, Assemblies of God. All those things came from there. And your source is what you are. Okay? So the traditions of the Pharisees is what has run down into the church today. That is why it has become a whole big mess. And that mess is what God is trying to deliver us from. And I believe the time has come because we have delayed God's time for over 2,000 years. Because Jesus came, before he came, John the Baptist came preaching the kingdom of God, repent for the kingdom of God. And Jesus came and took over and still we are preaching all kinds of funny things. So I don't advise you to go evangelizing and say all kinds of funny mess. You are going to increase the mess, but the time has come for us to stop the mess and preach the right thing. So go witnessing that Jesus preached nothing but the kingdom of God. But before you do that, come into contact with us and learn more about the kingdom of God so that you can witness it. God bless you. The last question, if someone wants to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal savior, um, or you've met an unbeliever and you want to bring him into the kingdom, how do you go about it? It's simple. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he made a clear statement, which is very dangerous, that no one, I repeat, no one cometh to the Father except through me. That is dangerous. You know, there are some people talking about there are many ways to go to God. You don't know what you are talking about. You don't know what you are talking about. If there are many ways to go to God, God, uh, Jesus will have no authority to say no one cometh to the Father except through me. Be careful. Those of you who are in other religions, you have to be careful. You have to be very, very careful. Okay? Because Jesus said no one cometh to the Father except through him. So Jesus is the way. Jesus is the gate. So if you go talking about the kingdom, People will say, I want to get into the kingdom. How do I become a citizen of the kingdom? That is when you have to tell the person, the person that is the gateway of the kingdom, he said, if you believe that he died for your sins, then you can be accepted to enter the kingdom. And that is what he told Nicodemus, that you must be born again. That is where the born again comes in. Now you die your old life as Jesus died. And then you bring your body resurrected by accepting Jesus that he resurrected. And that is how you receive Christ. So if somebody says, I want to be part of the kingdom you are talking about, they say, oh, say this after me. I believe, I believe. I was a sinner, I was a sinner. And the Lord Jesus came, died for me, died for me, and then he resurrected for me to have life. You become a citizen of the kingdom. You don't become a member. All Christians are members of religious bodies. I repeat, all Christians are members of religious bodies. I used to be one. One, and one year ago, I used to be a member of a religious body. But today, I am no more. I am a citizen of God's kingdom. And a member and a citizen who has power, it is citizen. Citizens have citizenship right, national right. That is why you can't sack a citizen. The worst thing you can do to a citizen is to put him in prison and he's still in his land, he's in his nation. And even in the prison, you give him sleeping place, give him water, give him food, take care of him. But a member has no power. They can suck you. When you're a member, they can suck you at any time. That is why the big mess of Christianity and the church today has made all Christians members of a religious body. And that confirms who you are. You are nothing but a member of a religious body. 
which is the church you go to. And that is why Jesus said, I will build my church. That means there were other churches in the days of his uh, uh, coming. What are some of those churches? The Pharisees had their church. The scribes have their church. The synagogues have their church. Even John the Baptist had his church. And he said, I will build my church. So let's distinguish the kind of church you are bringing people into. If somebody comes into the kingdom, he comes into a church that belongs to Jesus. That is why we have decided to name that church Ecclesia, not church, because we want it to be distinguished from the normal church that the Christians are running. So that is why God has given us the permission to form Kingdom Citizenship Ecclesia or Kingdom Citizens Ecclesia. And that is the kind of church we are going to start for people to fellowship and to get the truth. And the Bible says, when you get the truth, you shall be set free. The truth shall set you free. And the Bible says again, buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth and sell it not. That means it is something that is very expensive, very difficult, very hard to get. But you must try to afford it and to buy it. And when you buy it, never sell it. In other words, don't throw it away. Don't discard it. Don't misbehave with it. Keep it as a valuable, precious wealth or inheritance you have got. So your inheritance is the kingdom, not heaven. Religion has misled people and matching people to heaven. But what God promised us is not heaven, but kingdom inheritance. God bless you. God bless you too. Yes.